Good morning, folks. We've got weather, earthquakes, and science news across the range of coverage today. We're watching umbral magnetic fields turning out of view as we come to spaceweathernews.com, and we find that the sun is once again showing the minimum phase photosphere. We have coronal holes on the south. Might be relevant in the coming days, but nowhere near a major event. Right now, the plasma motion visible atop the departing sunspots does make for a good show on SDO. Let's go to the solar wind. Pretty much all telemetry is dropping out this morning. Geomagnetic conditions remain quiet, descending a bit further into that quiet. Still no proof of CME impacts. Top quake of the last day was an aftershock of the seven-pointer they had there three days ago, and we are on to the weather. Severe threats came and are going to keep coming for days. Tornadoes dropped up the breadbasket yesterday, as you can see. All eyes on your local forecast in Tornado Alley this evening. We've got more coming. Starting the science news with the loudest sound underwater. X-ray pulse micro-bubbling jets and creating vibrating shockwaves so loud it could blow your eardrums. All in 9 nanoseconds. We're at the correcting bad climate change science topic up next. An excellent look at the cloud properties and cooling action that has been the focus of Princeton since late 2017. But without using that new data or the cooling power of clouds, or the data on the cloud production potential of pollutants. They still were able to quickly slice 10% off the global warming prediction, again, without the new cloud data and definitely without the solar forcing. What happens when they add that in? More bad news for dark matter researchers. Gaia may be able to toss half of the terrestrial experiments out the window. It's certainly constraining their usefulness and serving their entire purpose of existence. But it could be worse. At least they get to keep trying. In Italy, maybe not so much. Neutrino and dark matter experiments, and more specifically the chemicals used in the processes, keep showing up in the local waterways. No next-level cataclysmic spills or accidents yet, but that is what they're trying to avoid. In reality, dark matter scientists have the best imaginations of any physicist, but that's not enough to make it real, and that's not what they mean by imagination here. This is a great piece on the placebo effect, or as I like to call it, your brain waves overcoming the physics and chemistry that was supposed to rule your system just because you thought so. By the way, that goes positive and negative. How about we counter those two dark matter stories with some real cosmology? As nice as it would be to act as though this is the cosmos through which we see, it's just not so. The plasma and low luminous matter block, obfuscate, and trick our eyes here on Earth. We've said this applies to lensing, distance measurement, and the missing mass problem, and today we see scientists agreeing on the lensing. It does not act as though through a vacuum, and indeed major updates or rewrites to hundreds of papers are warranted. Maybe two will ever happen. Last but not least, terrific paper out describing the filamentary production in the cosmos aligned with magnetic fields. This includes the perpendicular smaller filaments and feeding pathways for the material. It was only three years ago when mainstream science said filaments were random gravitational collapse features only. Welcome to the plasma universe. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.